Good evening, everyone. Hope we can hear us, everyone out there. All right, guys. It's a wonderful, rainy Tuesday. I'm sorry, Tuesday. I lose my mind. <laughs> Wednesday. Wednesday. We are back on with Tea and Poetry. And we've got Dave Steele coming to us live from Manchester, United Kingdom. And we have Orly, I see, is on getting a ride in with mobility. How are you, Dave? Good. Yeah, good afternoon, folks. What's up, Dave? How are we doing? Doing good. Doing good, doing good. You seem very quiet tonight. I don't know if that's just me, but you seem a little bit quieter than usual. Uh, as like far literally as literally volume wise or like energy wise, yeah, volume wise, volume oh, wise, really, huh? That's interesting. I wonder if we can, uh, Stephen's gonna be able to help us out with that. Uh, our technical assistance is on his way, it actually has arrived. What's up, Steve? And uh, yeah, I was just checking to see if my phone was turned up all the way, but it is okay. Busy. How's How that now? That's a bit better, yeah, perfect. Hey. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Very good. Ooh, didn't want to do that. Uh, okay, I think we're Dave. We're good. We are good. Yeah. Thank Thank you, Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm, 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 hap I'm happy. I'm uh, happy. I'm happy that you let us know that it was not so good. We were concerned about that. I love that we have technical assistance here at the studio. It is. It's great. <laughs> it's we got. We have. Really, we got. We have. Like, Full team here. It's a full yeah. team. Hello. Hey, Orly. How are you? What's up, Orly? Uh, I'm a woman about town. I'm so excited. <laughs> are, you, are you on a bus? I'm on a bus. <laughs> I'm, I am free and out in Baltimore nice. for, for the first time in a month. <laughs> so I'm really happy. Wow! You turned me down. Yeah. Sorry about that. Talking to talking to tech support here. Yeah, yeah my, uh, my 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 mic's a little, my headphones a little too loud for me. Yeah, I think you guys are still coming in slightly too quiet over too quiet? the. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, you may be loud in your headphones, but I think it, uh, how about for now? everyone else. In fact, if anyone else is watching, I know Doreen's out there, Allison's out there. Just put in the comments if it is coming a little bit quiet on your side, because we want to make sure it, 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 it's coming through that everyone can hear. Yeah, I do want to make sure. Yeah. We got something in the comments now in the chats. So, uh, guys, apologize for the uh, technical delay here. We're going to. Yeah, we got a couple of people saying they can't hear you very well at all. Okay. Well, we're going to hopefully get that. We're hopefully going to get that rectified. Is that better? It is when you were really close then, but we seem to be That's, getting some in interference just for a second. Let's see. So we need to be up close and personal with these microphones. That's all good with me. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So, Barry, before we kind of get stuck into things, do you want to uh, do the, uh, yeah, absolutely. the housekeeping wish, and the, the introductions and everything? I want to wish everyone a wonderful uh, good afternoon or good evening from wherever you are. And uh, it's great to be back here. I know it's uh, – I can't believe it's another Wednesday. It's just time is flying by. And, you know, it, it's, it's incredible stuff that's happening. So just want to let everyone know there are a few ways where you can have a few ways you can connect with us here on TM Poetry. You can raise your hand. You can send a comment through the Q&A or you can send us a message through the chat. So three ways to connect with us, get our attention, and we will do our best to bring you in and to be able to uh, allow you to join and be part of this wonderful uh, hour here. It's great to see some familiar faces out there, some new faces as well. And I um, appreciate everyone's patience here while we've got you know, through this little technical stuff, but uh, it's all good. And um, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we've got a special guest lined up. Orly is uh, waiting in the wings, ready to uh, kind of come on and uh, let's have a little chat with her. But before that, we always like to start with a piece of uh, newish poetry. 
and I've uh, found something for you tonight. And what we normally do for those people that are new to this hour of tea and poetry, where we, we chat about all things low vision, and I always read some uh, some of my poetry, is uh, with the first poem. I like kind of like to get people's feedback, and uh, you know, you can put in the chat, you know, if you relate to any particular lines. But I know Barry and uh, Ben are uh, probably waiting there with their uh, the pencil in hand or the pen in hand, mm -hmm. ready to take notes. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Before before you get started, I just want to say one thing, guys. Sure. When if you want to join us and you raise your hand, I'm going to assume that means you want to join to come into the conversation. We encourage you, if you're comfortable with it, to keep your video on. If not, audio will suffice. So keep that in mind. Okay. Here we go. When everything is getting too much for you to face, as you mourn for vision loss and what remains is slightest trace, remember you are not alone. These feelings are the norm. You're stronger than you think and you can weather blindness storm. The scars upon your heart have made you who you are today and you will not be beaten by what's next to come your way. Your senses are adjusting to this ever fading sight, but even in the darkest times, eventually there's light. It may not be the life that you've expected years ago, but this can be more beautiful than what you'd think or know. The only limitations to the things you can achieve are made up by the barriers that you yourself perceive. So if you slip or vision dip, now I'm right here to call. Just trust and this long cane. So, so with trust and this long cane, we can rise from every fall. Just give yourself the space and time to find your path again. For I will be here waiting on this friend you can depend. <laughs> wow. So mm. there are a couple of things that always, you know, I, I take notes here on everything you say. Um, there are a couple things that stand out. I want to, I think the most for me is, you know, like you said, made up by the barriers you perceive, right? So if someone out there is, perceives that they have barriers that's holding them back from accomplishing or getting past a difficult situation, that's something that could, you know, be dealt with over time by, you know, putting your mind to it and, you know, staying focused and, you know, Stay keeping focused. your eye on the prize. Stay focused. Absolutely. Keeping your eye the, on the prize. That, that, yeah, that, that. I knew you were going to pick up on that line. The only limitations <laughs> to the things you can achieve are made up by the barriers that you yourself perceive. And, and that's what it is. And I think, you know, I, I don't like to, you know, speak for anyone else because I'm not in anyone else's shoes. But I think that, you know, Ben, uh, would you say, you know, people... Well, I think we all put up barriers for anything, right? We all end up putting our own barriers in front of us because sometimes we're scared to make that, take that next step, you know, all the negative surrounding it, whatever it may be. It could be anything, you know, doesn't have to be sight loss per se, but I think that, you know, our bodies, our minds are trained that, hey, warning, warning, stop, you know, there's a barrier, you know, stop. So I think that, it goes with everything in life that anything that's put in front of us, um, you know, that is a, um, a perceived barrier. So I'm sorry, my computer is going crazy here. So that could be a perceived barrier. And I think that, you know, we all have to work harder to get past those barriers uh, and, and make us, you know, better individuals. So yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of us, you know, who live with kind of low vision and disabilities in general, uh, at times when we're having our kind of bad eye days or whatever you want to call it, our down days or whatever, um, Ben, uh, you know, your thoughts on this in a second, but you know, we all become prisoners to our own anxieties. Um, and, uh, you know, and sometimes it's that first step in all these things we do in life that is the most difficult. And, you know, what's what I'm saying there about the only limitations of the things you can achieve are made up by the barriers that you your, yourself perceive. Once we get past that, th those barriers and, you know, when we take that step outside the door and just face these things nine times out of ten, you know, we say to ourselves afterwards, actually, it wasn't as bad as we thought, thought it would be. Mm. Um, you know, it was a lot easier right. than we thought it would be. Yeah. And that's something I think that we can all do with reminding ourselves. And, you know, I've spoke about it before. I read these poems on the days when I'm feeling like this to kind of remind myself. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, I, guys, I'm sorry. I'm a little distracted here. Go ahead. You be take it away. You know, the interesting thing to me, Dave, right there is about the, the word trust right next to like cane. Trust yeah. right next to like cane and or the trusty guy dog, by the way. Um, absolutely. And, and it's interesting because for me as somebody that, that I, as I've lost vision, when I very first picked up that cane, I had such a diverse experience on one side. It was such a wonderful, like, wow, this is like, I, I, I can go out and be in the world again. But like, as you know, with my story, Dave, the very first time I was on public transit, people misunderstood my vision level. And I was accused of not being blind, right? Yeah. Because I have a white cane and I looked at my phone. And so I had this mistrust around that experience with my white cane. And it took me a while to get back to trust in the white cane again. And when I did, I had trust for my own courage again. And it was a weird thing to feel afraid to go out of my own front door. So trusting the white cane, I love the idea of getting back up after a fall because I think if you have low vision or if you are blind, it's likely you're gonna have a fall out there in the world for anybody with any vision level. But I can expect it and I can expect to get back up and I'll be stronger for it. And I know that I can call you and tell you about the story, Dave. So thank you for being there, brother. Uh, always, always. Uh, and I, th I think, yeah, I also like, you know, you talk about weathering the blindness storm. Um, that stood out to me. And um, you said there was also, it was it not to be beaten, whatever comes your way? Woo. Is, that, was, is that correct? Did I get that? Did I write that down correctly? The, yeah, yeah the, the scars upon your heart have made you who you are today. And you will not be beaten by what's next to come your way. So, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I, I, again, I think all it goes with everything in life, that everything that we do, no matter what the challenges are, we put our best foot forward. We deal with it and we make ourselves better individuals and we get past that particular barrier and move yeah. on. That line there, I mean, I talk about it all the time in a lot of poetry and a lot, a lot of the weeks on these calls about how the things that we've been through in our past um, and we've all got our individual stories, everyone out there that's listening to the call, the things that we've been through in the past and the challenges that we face give us the ability to deal with the things that we're yet to face going forward. And we've got to remind ourselves of that, you know, in those times where we think we can't face, it's all getting on top. And, you know, we feel like, you know, how can, how can we move on and get past what we're facing? And you've got to remind yourself of all the things that you've already been through and, trust that you can get through that you've got the tools to do that and that's exactly what that line is the scars upon your heart have made you who you are today and you will not be beaten by what's next to come your way and that is exactly you know the feeling that um i wanted to portray with that awesome yeah so dave yeah. do you want to should we go ahead and open it up and see if we want to have anyone uh comment on that or are you one who uh well let's let's bring all in because we've got okay. all right there <laughs> Ollie's there on the bus. Hi, Ollie. Yes. Hi. <laughs> yes, so, I'm on the bus. No, no um, rain, no sleet. Nothing will keep me away. <laughs> just like the post office. So, Ollie, <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure that you could kind of relate to that poem because I know a little bit about your story and we're going to kind of, kind of get into a little bit more about it today. Um, yeah. I was fortunate enough to meet you at the beginning of this year and, um, you know, we always talk about people walking into our lives at uh, the right time um, mm -hmm. and the connections that we make. And I think um, you are certainly one that falls into that category as far as I'm concerned. So um, can you, you know, I know you've been on this call before and you've kind of, you know, spoken on, on subjects, but we don't really know a lot about you or the people out there don't know a lot about you. So um, can sure. you kind of introduce yourself and explain who you are, um, your journey with low vision in a nutshell and what you do? Okay. And what you will be doing also. And what, Absolutely. Oh, oh boy. I hope we have enough with, hours. With, with, <laughs> with, without giving away specifics and confidential information. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes, 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 sir. And can so, you sing it the whole time too? No. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you've, got, you've got to rhyme <laughs> everything you say. <laughs> so, yes, I am on a bus. I'm in Baltimore. I've been here a month. It's my first time away from the nest. And you know what? It ties into what you said. Um, I will, oh, I'll, I'll introduce myself first before I go into that. So my name is Orly. 
I am now here in Baltimore, but I do live in South Florida. Uh, originally, I was born in Canada and grew up in Montreal, Canada, and then Toronto. Um, I have three kids and I was born with a hereditary condition. It is a form of retinitis pigmentosis, but it's called LCA, Leber's Congenital Amurosis. And the onset is at birth. Um, and both my sister and I have the same condition. Um, and when I was younger, I saw enough to see large print. The book had to be really close up to my face. In school, I never was able to see the blackboard unless I went up and stood in front of it. But at least I was able to navigate. I was able to manage. I used whatever vision I had really, really well. Um, I remember I was able to write on lined paper so I was able to really um, do certain things with the little bit of vision I had. However, it still wasn't a lot. So I, I would say, I've, obviously, I've experienced vision loss all of my life. Um, it really started deteriorating after I had my first child. I was 24. And I never knew. So I had a lot of doctor visits growing up, but I never knew that women that have RP, um, that pregnancies potentially can um, progress the condition a lot faster. It accelerates it. And mm -hmm. no one ever told me that, but you know, it doesn't matter. I don't know if I would have done anything different. I always wanted to have children, but I would, I would say that between the age of 24 till about 38, 39, it took those many years to deteriorate to where it's just light and shadows and no use. Paulie, can I ask you a question about that with regards sure. to the, um, the, the, you know, the pregnancy or, you know, having a child um, speeding up your RP or, or, or making your, 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 your sight loss progress quicker. Yes. Did, uh, did you ever get any answers with regards to that? If it was, you know, is that yes. down to the, the stress uh, that your body is under is that is it is that what the cause is is it down to that? I know, you know pressure and stress and everything has a has a great impact on on, on it 100 percent. so i only figured this out um because another mom that had rp told me after the fact and i did speak to uh, an ophthalmologist and a geneticist that the stress on the body progresses the condition it deteriorates because what's happening is there a de deterioration, there's pigmentation on the retina. Mm -hmm. And it, it, well, pregnancies are amazing, but they do cause a lot of stress. I mean, from yeah, pregnancy, even cr chronic pain set in for me, but I don't think I would have done anything different. Maybe, I, I don't know, you know, it's a maybe, I wouldn't have had three, but it doesn't matter. It is what it is. Um, and um, now I'm left with just uh, a little bit of light. But funny enough, the light isn't dependable. I don't know sometimes if it's the morning, like the light through the windows. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it's not as obvious anymore. And sometimes even the lights, I always saw lights in an office or in a room, uh, but I can't see them as much. So that, that in itself is even deteriorating now. Um, I moved to, to the United States two years ago. Um, I'm not saying I'm not, I've not gone through my, my fair share of, of anxiety, depression, because I have, but I'm a pretty tenacious, strong person that always bounces back, no mm -hmm. matter what. Um, I did leave, I was in uh, working for a bank in Canada, and now since coming to Florida, I pursued or I am pursuing a lot of, of why I'm here on earth. I really am here for very specific reasons. And now I took the plunge and it was scary. I think we were talking about limitations before in your poetry. It's yep. our limited beliefs. It's our limitations in our mind that keeps us stuck and our fears keeps us stuck and trapped. And I think, no, I, I know that I've overcome that because 
I've dealt with a lot of, of challenges, but I've always looked at those challenges as learning opportunities. And I had to learn that I couldn't, you know, I say I, I couldn't skip the line. If I had a, a problem or things I had to deal with and overcome, I couldn't force it to go through any faster. I could, I had to go through it to get to the other side. And then you evolve and you grow from it and you learn so much from all the hardships. Um, okay, I want to ask one more thing. Um, and we've, we've spoke about this on Tea and Poetry, you know, with previous yeah. guests um, and, and, and B Fox has spoken about this. And I'm sure what I'm going to say now, a lot of people out there who are listening are already relating to everything that you're saying with regards to your journey. Um, but like, do you feel, you know, we've, we, we speak, we speak about all the time about how, um, the unemployment rate, uh, of, yes. um, visually impaired people, uh, and of people in our community is, is it, was it 93% or whatever? Like it, it's ridiculously it's like high. 70 plus percent. Yeah. 70, 70 yeah. Plus. It's very yeah. similar here. Um, you know, I, I think you're very similar to, to B and to me, um, because of the way the working world is and you call it, you kind of standard employment. Um, because there's all those fears and misconceptions from both sides. Um, you like you like us. Um, one of the reasons we've connected, have gone down the route of finding what your passion is, why yes. where your skills lie, and creating those opportunities for yourself. Yes, and you know what I decided to do is get out of the box that was uh, when I was younger, I was told that I would probably succeed better in a call center as a blind person. <laughs> yeah, we've and, heard, I heard that lots of times. Yes, and you know what? It's it's fine. I had great companies behind me. However, that's not big companies, who I am. Big companies. Big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know what? In all reality, I wasn't happy. I still, you know, I volunteered. I did a lot of advocacy and um, when it came to issues with the unemployment rate, even in Canada at that time, it, it was really high. It still is. But I tried to do what I can. But I think I think it's my personality. I've always had a job. I've always been employed. But I've been I, I put myself out there and I, I find that I don't walk into any situation thinking I'm limited. I, I try to go for, I try to do the best I can and really go for something if I want it with no limitations in my mind. So, something really interesting um, that I've just thought of there with, with what, what, what you're talking about with your, that kind of time in, 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 in your story and part of your journey. Something that we all go through, and this isn't something we've not spoken about before on, the, on this, um, is when someone yeah. is kind of, you know, on that journey with their low vision and sight loss and get to the kind of stage where to like change everything or make big adjustments within their life. Mm -hmm. A lot of us kind of feel really, you know, fearful of yeah. how it's going to be accepting our blindness and what right. our lives are going to be like, but like yourself and certainly, you know, like me and, and, and it's definitely like Ben as well. I think, you know, we, uh, we, we are proof that we actually, when you take that leap, yeah. Um, often it's not as scary as you first thought it was going to be, like I just said in that poem at the beginning. But exactly. often, quite often, what we end up doing for taking that leap and actually embracing our new world of low vision or blindness or whatever you call it actually makes us happier than we've ever been. Oh, you know what? And, and I love that you said that because I've, I've had limited beliefs and fears. We're always afraid of the unknown. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The few successes in the past that I had when I took a leap and then I would say to myself, oh, my God, that would, the anticipation and the fear was worse yep. than doing it. And I saw that. And that's what helped me build the momentum. And again, it's not that I've not fallen. I have. But I promise you that it's so much better when you it's just taking that first step. And the second That's what step, it is. yeah, first step. It's, it's first like step. it's like we picked that poem on purpose, wasn't it? Yeah. So just think about it. I, and it's not that I'm superwoman or anything of any. I'm not any different than anyone. I left a stable, secure job, as secure as job can be. I left the country. I did not go back to corporate. I I started from scratch, 
And I decided to go back into um, looking at what am I. Did we lose you early? Dave, are you still there? I'm still here. Yeah, I think we might have just lost. Oh. We... Oh. That's what happens when are you write okay? the words. Yeah, you're, we hear you now. I was saying that um, I came, I took the plunge, uh, big plunges, uh, moved countries, but I pursued, uh, I went to culinary school and it's something that everybody probably initially thinks, oh my God, how? It's, it's, it's dangerous, it's challenging. And yeah, it is, and it had its moments, but that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Life is challenging in many respects. It's just that you have to go and take that first step and figure it out as you go along. And it, it does, it does work. It does. It, I mean, I succeeded in culinary school <laughs> and um, I just did that. And now I'm pursuing helping other people, but also helping my dream come true, which is to be a business owner. It's to help the unemployment rate in the blind community. And it's to create my vision and move that forward through cooking and through all kinds of initiatives that we're working on. Um, I, 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 before, and I'd love other people to ask questions or share, but I, what I wanted to share is that I noticed it became easier when I looked at the fact that I lived too much in my head. I analyzed too much. I feared too much. And that's when I was stuck in my head, when I started living from the heart. And I promise you, when you start letting go and living from the hearts, things start happening. And also when I realized that life is like, a, I mean, I'm giving you analogies, but it's real life. I mean, it's like a river. And I used to go against the pressure of this river, the opposite direction. And the more pressure and the more again, I, I went against the flow of, of life, the natural progression of life, the harder and the more intense it got. And yep. I used to run and numb. Yep. I used to numb that pressure away. And I realized through living from the heart as I let go of that intense pressure of having to control my destiny, control things, know things. And it started coming together when I let go and I started moving with the flow of life. And that's what made, made, has made the difference for me. The a great analogy, by the way. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I like that terminology, moving with the flow of life. It is. Yeah. Maybe, That's maybe how I felt. You know that. what? I, I, I was in a pool and I discovered that analogy in my head. I was trying to learn how to swim properly because I want to do uh, triathlon. And the more I tensed up, the more I was trying, I was in my head trying to figure out the right moves, the worse it got. I was sinking. And the, t and the teacher would say, just relax. I go, how? And then I realized I relaxed and I just put my head underwater and I just relaxed and it started coming. It started happening without me making it happen. Came from the heart. It and, came from know, the heart. And, and you know what? Stuff that comes from the heart, you can't make up. No. Not at all. I mean, nope. I got how many times have I actually spoke about this in with my journey where the fact that it, before I started losing my sight, um, when I probably had the early onset of RP, but was denying it. And I felt like my life was cursed because I was going in the wrong direction. And the yeah. minute I embraced it and then started to do what I'm doing now, uh, it was like I, everything falls into place at the right time. People, opportunities, <laughs> the words, um, it all yeah. just happens at the right time because I found that channel. Um, and that, yeah, that's exactly what you're doing, Ollie. And um, it's yeah. very, very powerful. Um, I will say this might sound silly, but I thanked my fears. I thanked the hard times. I said, you know what? It's like I you're understand. quoting lines from my poems here. This is. <laughs> oh, am I? <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. But, yeah, it's absolutely. Uh, hey, take some way, notes. <laughs> where is that bus taking you, by the way? I know. <laughs> it's coming to the office. No, I'm I know that, but I'm like, I'm like, it's 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 a long commute. Should it be that that long? I came from. Uh, oh, you were coming from down. Oh, from downtown. Yeah. You were coming from. Yes. Ah, okay. Yes, I. I All right. I am, oh, it's a different yeah. story. Okay. So yeah. let, 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 let's let's try and squeeze as much in as we can. Let, let's open it up. If there's anyone out sure. there on that that wants to raise the hand and come into the call and say hi to all you're asking any questions or say anything. Now's the time to do that. If you want to just put something in the Q and a, you can do that. Um, while we're waiting for people to do that, B, I'm sure you want to chime in with this. 
going to uh, I'm bringing in a couple of people here that want to. Uh, I, I would like to chime in. I'm, bring, I'm going to bring in Sedona Dave with a poem request. That's what, what my oh. I'm bringing in Sedona Dave in right now. What's up, Sedona okay. Dave? Hold on. I'm going to unmute him uh. and flip your phone. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. Okay. There he is. I just, I just unmuted. Is that good? We are hey, perfectly hey, clear. Hey, you partner. are cleared to proceed. What the hey. Hell? Hey, hey everyone. Partner. What's up, buddies? It's so great seeing everyone, everybody in Baltimore, Dave oh. out there across the we're not, we're like eight or nine time zones away, my brother. Uh, yeah, it looks beautiful there where you are. It really does. Oh, wow. he's, he's in paradise. I yeah. hate to say it, but it is. <laughs> hey, wow. hey S- uh, Sedona Dave, you sound yes. so much better than Jaws. Listening to your voice is so much better than someone or someone uh, of technology listen, reading your messages to me. <laughs> I, I speak a lot slower too. <laughs> oh, this is, this is so great. I, I'm just really glad to have joined you guys, uh, get the link up and, and really just to see everybody's, everybody's smiling. I really miss you all. Um, miss you too. Uh, Arizona's you. great. Hit the trails already. Got some good trail videos. Um, I, I was I was down at sea level for too long. I, I hit five thousand feet in hiking, and uh, I think I used up all the oxygen out here. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you who are first timer on this call, Sedona Dave was out here in Baltimore for six weeks. We hosted Sedona oh. Dave, and uh, it was an incredible experience. So, and lots more to come. Lots oh, yeah. more to come. Yeah, yeah. For sure. great times. Yes, thank you so very much. Dave, I got your books as soon as I got home. They're on the oh, yeah. so great. Thank you so Woo! much. My, my wife said, you've got blind materials from the UK. Do you know anything about this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I put that wow. all over the envelope because it's free post. Love it. That's uh, funny. That all is right. funny. And I'm also, uh, Diane had raised her hand. So, Diane, I'm unmute, asking to unmute you now. So... You can try to unmute. I hear that aircraft above you. It's doing a Dave. Hi. Yes. Hey, hey, Diane. Hey, Diane. <laughs> hey, hey, Diane. Hey, guys. Dave. Hi, Diane. Hey, hey Sedona Dave. Dave, I, Sedona Dave, I really need you because I am having an issue with my inflatable turkey. He won't stand up right. I'm like, Dave could fix this. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think Sedona can, Dave can do anything about inflatable I, turkeys? You, <laughs> you got me scared. You are definitely MacGyver. We all miss you. <laughs> miss you all. Hey, uh, <laughs> God bless you all. I'm going to mute and, and be quiet and listen. Yes. I want to hear you all to say great hearing you all. Love you all. Be well. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. So, Ben, you were, you were yeah. just about to say something to do yeah. poetry. Well, have I only heard one poem so far? Is, is that? Yes. Oh, well, I'd rather, instead of me having a chime in, I'd, I'd love to hear another poem, Dave. I, I don't know how to well, feel about that. No, actually, normally what we do is, oh, when we've yeah. got a guest on, we always, I always yeah. like to read them a piece of poetry okay, um, okay. that kind of relates to their story. So I have got yes. something lined up, as always. So this ah. one is especially for Orly, okay? Especially for a long it, bus ride a, today. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is, <laughs> is it about my uh, climbing up a big mountain? Let, let, let's <laughs> see if you let's see if you can relate. And it's okay. not, and it's not okay. Mount Washington. Oh, <laughs> That's a little one. A little All right, here we go. We talk about the things that hold us back and what's to come. We talk about our fading sight and the glare of blinding sun. We talk of independence, isolation, and lost pride. But did you know about the strength that we all have inside? I'm not saying we are superheroes. We don't need those superpowers. But we have walked through storms and made our way through heavy showers. We've lost so many challenges, but never given in. We celebrate the little things each day like biggest win. Despite the limitations of the sight that we have lost, won't cut our ties, our heads held high, this blind life we have bossed. So never judge us by the cane, we hold our dog to guide. It's more about the people we we all are on the inside. Oh God, I'm melting, but it's so- (laughs) Because it's raining. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, you know, you talk about heavy showers. Yeah. (laughs) You know, (laughs) oh my goodness. That is so fitting. And you know what? You're, you're nourishing people's souls and people's hearts through your poetry. And my goal is to nourish people's souls through food, through my stories, inspiration. I want to empower people and it is totally possible. So I did mention about this climb. Um, I'm preparing to uh, do a climb in March yeah, of 2021. Yeah, just a, a few, few steps. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. 19,000 feet of steps. Wow. That's but awesome. uh, in Tanzania, um, is it a Africa. a place called like Kilimanjaro? Is that what, it that what it's is called? Call, yeah, it's Kill. Kill Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro. <laughs> Mount Kilimanjaro. Awesome. Yes. Yes. So I'm that's... just curious. I'm just curious. Is anyone out there on the call today? If anyone has ever visited Mount Kilimanjaro, I and know someone have... who did it. I know someone who did it. A good friend of ours. Oh yeah, Rebecca Alexander. Oh. Yeah. oh wow! I did not know that. Uh huh. Yeah, she did. Oh wow! And if there's I, anyone I, on the I call today, to we'd love to, to have. We, we could. We can arrange that. Uh, yep. If anyone here on the call today has climbed Mount Kilimanjaro or has just visited the base camp at Mount Kilimanjaro, please raise your hand ASAP. We'd love to talk with you. <laughs> but go ahead, or let's let's go ahead and, and continue to share about this uh, expedition that you're going to be embarking on. Yes. Um, uh, uh, as soon as I get the uh, into the office, I have a meeting with a team. I'm the only visually impaired individual. <laughs> And um, it's all about leadership. It's leadership coaching, uh, nutrition and physical coaching, preparing for the climb. It's in March of 2021. And it's something I've personally wanted to do. And I just want to show people and myself that there aren't any limits. And this leadership is there to teach me how to completely lead myself with integrity so then I can go out when I'm on top of that mountain, launch myself down and jump into the next chapters of my life and lead from integrity and lead from authenticity after a huge six day climb up this mountain. Wow. Oh my goodness. No, it's, yeah. a, it's a Incredible. six day journey. It's Incredible. A six, six days up the mountain. And I just got the schedule 10 minutes ago on my email oh, wow. of the, the last day to reach the summit. So this is day number six. You wow. depart camp on uh, at just shortly after midnight. It's a 10 hour hike, the last wow. trek to the summit. 10 and I hours. Just, 10 hours. And that's after five days of trekking already. <laughs> how long, how wow. long does it take you to get back down? Are they going to just one, like 30 seconds? One, yeah, are you going to zip wire down or something? Oh, I love <laughs> yes. That you know what? I told I told them I've always wanted to go parachuting. So, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I think Barry so, said no. he's going to send a helicopter just to the peak so we yeah. can join you for Sedona a, Dave is going to be the pilot. TM poetry. Yeah. <laughs> if it, just for everyone out there, Sedona Dave does have his pilot's license. Oh, wow. he, will, he will be on the right seat in the chopper. Oh my God! Oh, I don't know the blind le- flying the blind. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So I'm excited. I am scared, but you know what? I'm in great hands, and I'm being uh, coached and prepared for the physical and the the psychological, the emotional journey. And I I'm up for it. I'm really excited and. At the same time, we're looking at doing a documentary. I'm excited about that, and and developing a business plan. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Sorry. Woo. See, they're trying Woo. to Science get going to, off and everything. They're trying to get me to the office on time. Yeah, they're clearing the way. <laughs> Escort. Yep. The Secret Service clearing the way for Orly. You see, <laughs> you know, one thing I wanted to say is I could have gotten all frazzled. I wasn't there in the office as planned. I was in, uh, the bus was in, you know, really late, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? You take things in stride. You still make things happen. Absolutely. You breathe, you breathe and it all, it's all good. It's all good. How's your, uh, how's Regan doing? How's she She's doing? She's here on the floor. My guide dog is here. 
she's anxious to get to the office so she can uh, scrounge in Ben's office. You know, the floor always has crumbs on There's it. There's never anything on my floor. <laughs> <laughs> never. Yeah, okay, is there, is there anyone else who Anybody. wants to kind of come in? Yeah. Anyone out there? We'd love to. Uh, ask there's lots of people one. out there. I'm just looking at the list now. I'm sure there's Bunch people who want to come say hi. Some people would love to bring you on. Uh, here comes Allison. Allison coming right up. Hey. Coming all. Uh, by the way, while we bring Allison I on, I want to give a special shout out to one of our weekly attendees who is always here. Unfortunately, couldn't make it this week. I want to give a shout out when this Travis. Hope you're doing well. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I love to Travis, when you listen oh, to the recording, yes. we're thinking about you and we miss yes. you. Actually, oh. just, just before Alison actually speaks, I've got something that I need to announce. So I, I need to do it now. Um, for those of you that have been on the call, and Alison, are you there? Can you hear me? She can hear us, but I'm asking her to okay. unmute. So hold on. Right, okay, no problem. So... Um, a few weeks ago, for those people that have been tuning in for a good few weeks now on a regular basis, uh, you'll remember we had um, a, a lady from the UK by the name of Karen Baker, whose mm -hmm. son Sam um, was in hospital because he'd lost the ability to use his legs because he was that um, <laughs> he, 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 he was struggling with anxiety and depression through losing his sight through RT oh. and the trauma had, uh, had basically made him lose the ability to walk and he was he was in the right place eventually and getting some support anyway just to let you know Karen sent me a message um earlier today and uh, asked me if I would read it to you guys to give you an update on how Sam's doing who has only just turned 13 so I'm just going to um see if I can pull this message up now you can still hear me can't you guys we hear you loud and yeah. clear yeah okay yeah. I just want to make sure because I'm going into my messenger so I can read this message um so the message from Karen says, here we go. Um, Hi, Dave. I thought I'd give you a quick update uh, on Sam. I've tried joining your broadcast, Tea and Poetry, uh, on a Wednesday night, but I am on a train coming home from London, and when it's on, the signal is a nightmare. Sam is doing really well. He hasn't oh. been sick for over three weeks, and he had his first visit back at his secondary school on Monday. All went well, and he will start attending lessons next Monday. He's, he will still need to go back to the unit to stay there after school and spend the rest of the week there. But this is a massive progression for him. Um, yeah. And just letting us know um, if we could uh, update everyone on how he's getting on. And as, as promised, when Sam is feeling a lot better, uh, and um, I'm sure he will be soon, we're going to have him on Team Poetry as our special guest and we can all get to you know wish him well and, uh, and and say hi to him. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank uh, you. Really nice to hear something positive. Yes. And uh, please send our best to Karen and Sam. Thoughts and prayers are always with them and just continue to uh, get better and we look forward to having them here. Absolutely. So, Allison, you are live. That's great news. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hey, Allison. Hi, hey. Allison. I'm good. I'm good. I just wanted to say hi. And um, just, I feel like I've kind of met my tribe. You guys are great. And really, I mean, you're inspiring individuals who are going through a tough time. And yeah. I think my journey and listening to Orly's story and, and just all of you, actually, um, I met, I think it was the beginning of the pandemic. And I think I reached out to Dave and it's just made me get out of my shell and comfort zone. And yes. I, just, I just appreciate it because, you know, I've dealt with vision issues since I was young, but you're making a difference. Keep doing what you're doing. You're inspiring others and making the connection. So, it, it, you know, I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you you know, so much. And what, what I'd say is, you know, I, I speak to like different, organizations all over we we're always trying to find new ways of uh, of uh, impacting their you know their base of of of, of users service users right. and it, it you know really it's not that difficult you know we came up with this just as a way to kind of keep ourselves out there while the pandemic was going and, and reaching out to people and 
this um, this platform it just continues to grow and grow, and, and you've played a massive part in that, Alison, with sharing it with people. And you know, there's plenty of other people, Doreen's out there, I know, and, uh, and quite a few of, uh, of our regulars who are, who are listening in. It's all about you know just telling more people, and, and because we can we can do this together, we can support each other. Yeah, and it's helping. I mean, making that connection. You know, like Orly said. Um, when you help others, you're helping yourself and, and it's about getting out of your own way. And I was stuck, I think, in that and listening to my own, you know, yeah. my own head and what goes on in the depression and the dips and the, you know, just all the journeys you go through and with your vision. Um, yeah. And if you just get out of your own way and let it flow and you bob and weave, as my husband and I call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Know, it, it yeah. does truly make a difference. And I was talking to somebody that's locally here and, you know, we're connecting and we're, you know, we're starting to put some activities together and, and, and creating, you know, you're creating your tribe. And I kind of feel like the momentum and the platform is growing in, yep. in our community of blind and visually impaired. And it's, it's just, it's beautiful to see. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. And I Thank feel you blessed so much, Allison. We're, we're happy okay. to have you here, part of the tribe. Absolutely. And it. uh, it's an incredible yeah. tribe that's continuing to grow, you know, every week. Um, and again, thanks to you, Allison, for sharing and, and bringing thanks. incredible individuals to the group. Mm -hmm. And I encourage everyone out there that if you're enjoying this team poetry to please share and, you know, invite your friends because um, we love this. This is, this is what we love. Yeah. We, we love this. And we just, you know, our goal is to continue to uh, advocate, spread the awareness and bring more and more people together as a community and to have this incredible uh, tribe that we're part of. So I'm blessed to be part of it. So thank, thank you. And I'd love to add something if that's okay, Barry. Sure. Um, it was mentioned about this young man who had so much fear and depression and anxiety about vision loss that was in the hospital with his legs, um, the importance of trying to get past our fears is and heal from mental health or any type of recovery is so important because our brains can do so much that we don't realize that we can cause a lot of illnesses. I did by by my stress and anxiety are physical true illnesses and symptoms that manifest because it stems from the fear and anxiety we've created in our brains because of what's happening to us. Um, and also food, what we put in our body. And that's what I, I want to help others with is the, the mental health piece and also food. It all works hand in hand. It's so important to incorporate. Absolutely. You've and got, you've got proper, to take care of yourself. Proper, it sure does. It yeah, sure does. It's yeah. so. It, it, it's so. It sure does. Orly can vouch for what I eat every morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, so can I. So can I. Yeah, he's and B as man. well. Yeah, but we, yeah. We, we said it right at the beginning when we were talking about all his journey, saying about how you know um, uh, having a child put the the actual stress of that made your vision mm -hmm. deteriorate. And I, when I was first diagnosed, you know, just six and a half years ago with RP officially, uh, even though I had the early onset from probably my early twenties, but when it really started to dip, I lost all my peripheral vision in the space mm. of about eight months. And when I look back on it now, actually, I think a lot of that was down to the, the pressure and stress and anxiety and mm -hmm. depression that I was going through because of everything else. So for those people who are out with, who are watching this back again, maybe at a later date or are listening in who work for a charity or, you know, are providing support mm -hmm. for people out there with low vision and blindness. I think it's more important than ever to realize that actually, you know, have people having more, the right kind of support in those early stages. Yes. And answers to the questions that they need and support with everything, um, whether it be, you know, emotional, financial, all those sort of things mm -hmm. um, has a, a major impact on on that could have a major impact on their vision, especially think with things like RP, because the yeah. stress can add to it. So I actually probably would have been seeing a lot more if it hadn't been for the. Um, the, the way I fell through the net and, you know, we lost our house and, you know, struggled with support and everything else. 
um, you know, that probably had a, a big impact on my eyes when I look back on it now. So it's it's so important that we take care of ourselves and we and we find uh, the right support and we be there for others because that's Absolutely. one of the reasons we do this call is because we've been there. We always try and be there for other people. And you know, when I um, after my third pregnancy. I went to doctors because I had so much body pain and it was also the time my vision really took a, a, a big dive. Mm -hmm. And in all reality, what ended up happening was I was given narcotics. I was given a cocktail of pills to deal with those symptoms instead of dealing with the source and, yeah. and, and how important that is even from the beginning of, of vision loss and going through that, you really need to um, incorporate a lot of strategies and supports, put a lot of supports in place. Instead of getting lost with, you know, doctors and they're throwing pills at you and then you get lost in that world. And if Very I can important. Go ahead. say something. Yeah. Yeah, of course, Alison. I, I think too, the medical, you know, we need to educate the medical, you know, people in the medical field, because they will, I mean, you're not handed a pamphlet, you know, you're not told what to do. And it's all connected, you know, your mind, body and spirit and, and the health and the food we put in our body, but also the pills that they give you. Yes. And, you know, it's about education. And this platform is great. And we, it, it just needs to continue to get out into the world. Um, oh, in my and we, are, we are, we are striving behind the scenes. Yes. Barry, Ben, so yeah. Dave. So oh, my, man, my man Dave had a, a middle of the night brilliant uh, brainstorm that he'll tell you about soon. That doesn't I'll let you know. Dave had a brilliant brainstorm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm lucky to hear a, about it. Yeah, I, we, well, we can't tell you just yet, but yeah, I had sorry. a moment um, at the mm. weekend where I literally I was in bed and at what uh, one thirty in the morning I sat upright and when oh my god I just had an an incredible idea and I had to get straight on the phone to Ben. Um, uh, you know, and, and we had to talk it through and I spoke to Barry and everything else. And it, 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 it was actually something that we're already kind of working on to a certain degree, but we were kind of going to expand on it and grow it and grow it. And this, um, when we were able to tell you more about this, it, it, it's going to change. I, and I everything. was ecstatic to hear about it just a little after 6 a.m. Eastern on Monday morning. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so like started to you my was, commute wow. and uh, Dave's like, when you have a chance, can you give me a call? Got to share something with you. And I literally hit dial mm -hmm. and boom and Dave's like I didn't expect to hear from you that quickly mm -hmm. I'm like nope I've got the time yeah. now let's talk I want to hear about it and uh, but do you see what's happening you're you're having a conversation about something that is so important and by getting groups of people together it can happen we can make it happen oh yeah we are gonna make absolutely. it absolutely and, and you yeah. know even what we when we and first started TM poetry we it was we didn't call it TM poetry it was just more of you know having these um Conversations, conversations, webinars, whatever you want to call it, you know, through Zoom uh, in the beginning of the pandemic. And we said, let's, you know, have Dave Reed. We felt it would be a great opportunity. And the group, that we're, I'm, I'm taking, Alice, I'm taking your, I'm taking from you, the tribe has grown significantly. <laughs> and we, you know, we were first nervous. We make this a weekly event. And I said, yes, we're going to make it a weekly event. I felt that we have the energy, mm -hmm. we have the momentum. And we have the participation, and it's only grown significantly. So, uh, and I to certainly everyone have out poetry, there. you know, it's eight hundred and growing, like eight hundred plus and growing. Yeah. So it's and, funny. And by you the know way, what oh, we need to do. Sorry, yep. no, it's okay. I was going to say what we need to do, everybody, Dave, and everybody that would love to participate in in this is is take this message to the community as a whole, to the general population as a whole. But you are right. The medical professionals need to hear some of this because addiction, mental health, all this is 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 rampant all over the world. I, I want to share with you guys so just a quick a personal uh, story, and we talk about you know Orly mentions what the food that we put into our body, how important it is to put the right ingredients into our body. Our body, our soul needs the proper nourishment, and I started. Uh, eating fruit until noon. I extend it goes a little past noon usually, but I, again, I, I drink my coffee in the morning, but I only put fruit as far as anything, you know, hard uh, food into my mouth, to my body. I only eat fruit until noon every day. And, you know, it's a mixture of berries and melons is what I eat every morning. And I started doing this about, I think, over three years ago. 
I personally have a medical condition. I'm happy to share with everyone. I have uh, Crohn's and it's a gastro related um, condition. And, you know, fortunately I've always been, you know, it's been a, um, on a scale of one to 10, I've always had a mi very minor uh, case of Crohn's and I've taken, I've had to take medications over the year, over the years. And, you know, I have flare ups once in a while. So, you know, I want to, I just want to share it. It's not hundred percent perfect, but what I do want to share with everyone is that I go for um, colonoscopies, colonoscopies for every two years. And this was, it was this past year, I think it was last year. I've actually, I'm sorry, this past year where I went for my uh, routine um, scope and the doctor comes over to me and he goes, Barry, he goes, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it <laughs> because, you know, knock on wood, um, it's not only completely dormant, but it's like disappeared wow. at Crohn's. And the only thing I can contribute to that effect to is eating the fruit every day. So, and, I mean, and, and so Barry, powerful. you are right. What I do is I don't eat before before noon. I just have a very healthy smoothie, and I put lots of fruits and greens and make it taste delicious. And that's how I start my day. So yeah, that makes a big difference. So uh, Allison, Philip wants to know when the California group is going to meet up. Haha. <laughs> um, we need to do that. Actually, he's the guy that's from San Francisco, right? Yes. Oh, I never got his information, but I'm heading up there. I'm heading up there Monday for a postdoc, so I could connect with him. Okay, I will. Uh, I will connect you guys. Okay, I give him my email. Yeah. And uh, I'm just curious: do we have anyone out there from the Arizona region? Anyone besides Sedona, Dave? Anyone out there from from the uh, Greater Phoenix, uh, Flagstaff, Sedona area? If yes, please let me know. Um, feel free to uh, connect with me anyway if you can, but we would love, I would love to hear from you. And uh, I can't believe what time it is. I know Orly's been patient. She's been uh, waiting downstairs. Sorry, can I just point a request yeah. as well, actually? Sure. Um, I know we've got Bailey uh, out there listening. Uh, Bailey, if you're willing to come on, because uh, I'd like to speak to you a second, raise your hand um, if you're willing to come on. Um, cause uh, I got a video this week and I wanted to kind of speak about it with Bailey cause I'm, I've not even told you actually. I, I think Bailey, I showed Ben though. Oh, here we go. Here we go. She's giving me permission. Bailey, you there? She's coming. She's coming. Okay. Oh, wait. She's coming. I, I, and and orley has been, Orly did arrive to the building. I know she was waiting downstairs in the uh, yeah. lobby. And um, yeah. she's on her way I'm up I'm here. Yeah. Hi. Hey, hey Bailey. Bailey, how you doing? Sorry, my ca I um I'm opting to keep my camera off because uh, I look like a monster. But all right, <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. Um, I but I just I, I wanted to bring you on. I, I just saw you were out there. Um, I, I had uh, Ben seen it. I sent I sent it Ben earlier to um, earlier this week. I had the most wonderful video. I woke up to um a, a, a few mornings ago uh, from your nephew Braden, didn't I? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do you want to kind of tell everyone what, what, what happened there and uh, what the videos were? Yeah. So my nephew, Brayden, he is 10 years old and he um, has RP as well. And he is, oh my gosh, the most, he's just the toughest little boy and he always sees the positive in everything. And so uh, Dave's words have really been, um, influential to our whole family because he's just so optimistic so we don't oh my dogs are going crazy sorry so we don't get to hear um I guess the negative side of what he's going through a lot and not that your words are ever negative but it's always like it's the truth and and it's like nitty-gritty and and it helps us understand his perspective but um he I know Dave sent him his all three of his books and wrote him a note and um He's oh he's excited. He's not the best on camera. I'll tell you that he gets shy. But he did, he did well in those videos. Yeah, he, did, he um, did. yeah. Actually, just yesterday, my uh, his mom sent me a, a text of a poem that he wrote. Unrelated. I got but it. it was, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Well. What it's beautiful. Nine eleven. He's, he's learning from your words for sure. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's oh. writing poetry and uh, and yeah, he did this amazing video. Of him opening the uh, the parcel and, and reading the uh, 
the, the, the dedications that I'd wrote in e each of the books. And I think one of them was, I think in book three, I wrote, um, I hope these poems inspire you as much as you inspire me, which is true because he does inspire me. And to remember um, or, or hope that hope that they remind him that he, you know, that despite any limitations of sight, he can still achieve uh, the incredible and he will achieve the incredible. And um, to be able to kind of do that with, with, with kids like Braden is just, it's just great. And he's going to interview me um, as well. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Gonna interview. Braden's going to interview me, which I'm really looking forward to. Yep, he's, he's very excited and we're all just super thankful for you and uh, just the friendship that you've shown us too. So thank you. Yeah, as, as I am for, the, for you and yours, Bailey. And once again, you know, sorry to put you on the spot and bring you on, but yeah, I just wanted to say that. And uh, <laughs> I hear your voice, Bailey. Braden, so thank no, you. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. And I just got my book in the mail, the um, Emerging Proud, the I Inspire book. So I'm oh, excited. Yeah. I literally just got mine today as well. Yeah, I'm excited. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Nice. To our good friend Yvette Chivers, who put together that book. Awesome. Yep. It's, awesome. It looks great, too. I love the cover of it. it all awesome. the pictures yeah. of everybody. Awesome. Thank you so much, babe, for coming on. Good Thank to see you all. everyone here. I can't believe it's already after five o'clock here on the East Coast. And we're going to close it out with Dave. And I just want to thank everyone for participating, as, 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 as always. Um, if anyone else wants to come on, um, raise your hand now. And uh, I will bring you on. If not, we will uh, save it for next time. Uh, please don't be shy. Again, a lot of, I see some new names out there. So um, hopefully we'll catch you next time. And thank you, Orly, for joining us from the bus. And it's nice to <laughs> see the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, there's a word I'm looking for, but uh, it's nice to see that your benefits from Florida are working up here in Baltimore with mobility. That is rec reciprocity. Is that the right word? Is that the right word? Reciprocity. I think, yeah, I think that's the right word, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I just want to say before we go as well, um, the, it's uh, it's Remembrance Day here in in the UK and, and, and Veterans, Veterans Day, Day here. Veterans yes. Day there. Um, I just want mm -hmm. to thank you know thank all the uh, the, the, the the amazing heroes in uniform um, yeah. for their service are out there um, and this time last year I was in Baltimore speaking uh, and reading poetry at the amazing Veterans Day concert there and uh, it was one of the highlights of the tour and all the memories were com coming up today uh, so sure a big was. thank you to uh, Fred and everyone at BISM and hopefully see all you guys mm. again soon. Oro, did you hear that? Bism. I heard BISM, yep. guess what? Yes. I'm going. You yes. will absolutely it will you'll love it it'll blow your mind what an hey, experience Dave, i heard that they shut down production so you can yeah let, well let, let's just address everybody. that quickly before we went there That's so amazing. barry do you want to kind of tell that story uh yeah to me, I'll, I'll i'll make it real, real quick so dave was asked to speak and read poetry at the veterans day Conf uh, Conf veterans day concert that was put on on a saturday night black tie event uh dave all dressed up black tie and um, he started off the second act and, you know, we had, I don't know how many, a few, three, four, 500 people there. Yeah. Um, of all different divisions of the military. And it was held just outside of uh, Aberdeen Proving Ground. So uh, here in the, just outside of Baltimore, half hour outside of Baltimore. Anyway, Dave gets up there, of course, knocks it out of the park and he just blew people away with his words. And I remember they said there's only time for one piece of, you know, one poem. So we, we decided that Dave was going to combine two pieces and, and connect them and make it into one big piece. And it was just like, people were like, I don't want just silent, but it was just like, whoa. No, yeah, so, I was talking more about, oh, you're going, to, you're going to go into business, are you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, so Dave knocked it out of the park Saturday night, and then we had scheduled to visit BISM. BISM is Blind Industries and Services of Maryland. I'd give a shout out to BISM, the entire team. We love you, and we miss you. And we were supposed to go there on that following Tuesday, uh, Dave was going to speak to a small group in the rehab department, I think about 20 people, they said, and then we were going to uh, go on a, a tour of the building. It's a massive facility, BISM's main headquarters in Baltimore. It used to be a Coca-Cola bottling plant, so uh, you can imagine the monstrosity of the size, and um, that was the plan. We get there Tuesday morning, and we're told we have a change of plans. We thought it was going to be something like you know negative. Usually when you hear a change of plans, you know, it's usually like you know, something negative, but 
what happened was it was really a positive. We get there and we they say that Fred, the president of BISM, is going to give us a personal tour and take mm -hmm. Dave around. And because I've been, you know, telling Dave, you got to come to BISM. You can't wait to show you. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, okay, I hear you. No problem. But it's very hard to put it into words. You got to really experience it and, and feel it and see it um, to get a, it's, you know, really full understanding of what they do there. Yeah. And so we go on a tour and then they said, we decide, Fred says that he was so moved by Dave's words Saturday night that he wanted the entire company. Now we're talking mm. the entire company, not just one location in Baltimore, but they have like 600 employees uh, spread out through Maryland and they go into North Carolina and also at Fort Knox. And Fred says, I want the entire company uh, to hear Dave. And they live streamed Dave speaking for an hour. They shut down production for an hour. Uh, we're talking about production as far as like cut and sew, paper, bottling water, paper, I, all kinds of stuff they do there. Incredible. Uh, cleansers, you name it. And they shut down production so Dave could speak. And it was it was just a very moving uh, experience. And um, I was just glad to be part of that and uh, thankful for business yeah, for that as well. It was, it was, it was a special, special moment. And yep. that, you know, that, you know, that's, uh, yeah, I can't wait to share those memories. They'll be coming up on my Facebook, so I'll be posting them on the Stand By Me RP page and the Blind Poet page. And I've um, been booted from Facebook. I don't know what's yeah, going on with Facebook. About Facebook. <laughs> Forget about it. I was hacked, <laughs> yes. and then I get back on, and, oh, and, and, and they <laughs> shut me down. Yeah. For literally Facebook's no reason, a bad so. word at the moment, that's sad, yeah. But, yeah, we'll so. be, I'll be sharing the videos <laughs> as they come up this week. Um, so we'll find some other way of kind of getting them on. And I think, Barry, I'm sure you've got them as well. On the, absolutely. On, on, absolutely. So thanks, everyone, for participating tonight. Dave, I'm going to have you close it out. Okay. Don't give up on your dreams you hold because your eyesight wanes. There's nothing quite as beautiful as the strength evolved from pain. Our scars upon our hearts and skin remind us that we can. Surviving every battle since our time in life began. My purpose as a father, as a husband, as a friend, allows me to inspire what my broken eyes can't mend. Though faces fade, these poems made have given me a way of showing all that's possible, your faith in me repay. This tunnel's getting darker, pretty soon I may not see but I am so determined to be the best me I can be. Erase these misconceptions that have held us back too long to show though we're disabled, we are able to be strong. So thank you for believing every word entwined in verse. I won't forget our friendship's debt, your love I'll reimburse. No matter what this blindness brings with you, I'm side by side. Remember what we're going through in this life, enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride is for sure. Enjoy the ride. Yeah. That is for sure. Enjoy every moment, every day. Wish everyone a uh, remainder good week. Remainder of the good week and mm -hmm. um, a wonderful weekend. Look forward to seeing you next week. And by the way, if you registered for thriving the Thriving Blind Summit, we'll see you there. So Actually, I won't be there, but B I'll Fox be there. will be there. I'll be there. Donna Dave will be, be there. Ah, oh, Allison's ah. going to be there. It opens yeah. tomorrow night. You'll be there for the opening. Yep. Uh, I will not be there for the opening, though. No. Tomorrow night. Oh, Thursday night? Yeah. Oh, I will be there. I'm there Saturday. Saturday. Then Saturday. I will. Then I will. So, yes. So, uh, yep. Everyone, uh, say, wish everyone a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the rain of the week. Yep. We'll see you next week and more to come. Thanks for that Thank beautiful you, Dave. poetry, Dave. Yep. Thank Always. Take care, Take care guys. Thank Bye, you, guys. Dave, for having me. Bye, Take guys. Care. Take Thank care, you, Bailey. Take care, Dan.